Hello, and welcome to It Just Makes Sense, Order Delivery with the 220A Olfactometer. I'm your host, Chris Rand, product consultant here at Aurora Scientific, and today I'd like to delve into our updated order delivery system by first providing an overview of what we would be covering today, which will be followed up with an in-depth video about integral components and functions that make this such a versatile system. So let's give you an idea of what I will be covering and what you can hope to get out of this TechCast. First off, I will describe how the 228 olfactometer works with particular attention on the functionality provided by the mass flow controllers, front panel connections, and solenoid valves that are used to control gas flow. Next, I will discuss the modification and configuration of the system by walking through initial setup and how to add, remove, or replace components, including add-on modules. Finally, I'll walk through the olfactometer control software, paying particular importance to vial configuration, generation, of sequences and ultimately executing order delivery. Before we get into setting up the system and using it, we first need to go over what components make up the olfactometer and what role they play. One of the most important parts of the system are the mass flow controllers. I'll talk about why there are three, what they do, and how they are controlled. There are three mass flow controllers in the control box. The first is a 1000 SCCM unit at the top, which is the exhaust line. This is clean air flow that exits the back and is matched to the send flow to minimize pressure changes. The second 1000 SCCM MFC is located underneath and represents the dilution flow through the valve manifold that mixes with the odor stream. Lastly is the 100 SCCM MFC at the bottom that flows into a specified vial and generates odorant. This is then mixed with the dilution line at the mixing valve prior to being released at the final valve. Now that we've discussed what's inside the box, let's focus on all those front and back panel connections and how you can utilize them to their full potential. Looking at the front panel, you'll see the air in push fitting to connect your clean air source. Below that are your BNC connections, first of which is DIO1, an input that takes an external TTL signal to trigger the start of a sequence written in the 220A control software. Beside that, DIO2, which is an output configurable by the user to generate a sequence sync out or vial status signal. Below that is final valve trigger in, which takes an externally delivered TTL signal to trigger the opening or closing of the final valve where high opens the valve and flows the odor into the animal and low closes the valve and flows the odor to exhaust. Next to it is final valve sync out, which generates a signal corresponding to the final valve status where high is open and low is closed. Control of the olfactometer is done via an Ethernet cable connected to the LAN port here. The front panel power switch turns the unit on and the power LED will illuminate, indicating that the unit is now powered. Looking at the back of the unit, you can see the push fitting for the exhaust air out which connects to the mixing valve manifold via Teflon tubing. The monitor signal's DIN connector is included for external hardware that have this connection. Lastly is the power cable fitting to plug into your lab's outlet. You may have noticed numerous green LED indicators on the front panel. What do they mean and why are there so many? When the power switch is turned on, the power LED will illuminate. Above that are LEDs that indicate odor and flow status. The animal light is on when odor is delivered to the animal. Purge illuminates when purging the system of odorant by opening all valves. Odor LED is on when an odor vial has been selected and in use. And lastly, your flow on LED will illuminate when air is flowing through the system. Next to these are your vial LEDs, which indicate what vial is currently being used. There are up to 16 odorants that can be used with the system. Each column represents a set of four vials, corresponding to each model of olfactometer. The base unit of four, plus a series of add-on modules to expand to eight, 12, or 16 total. Moving away from the control box and into the valve manifold, let's take a look at the solenoid valves, what role they play in the system, and where they are located. From the odor MFC, air flows into the vial manifold to four solenoid valves, each one corresponding to a single vial in the order in which they are mounted. One, two, three, four. When the vial valve opens, air flows into the vial containing the odorant. The air flows down the longer tube which generates headspace within the vial. The shorter tube then picks up the odorant created in this headspace. 
Once the odorant is picked up, it travels into the dilution flow and then finally down to the mixing valve. The dilution and odor streams mix together as they flow to the mixing valve. When there, they create the desired concentration percentage following the odor stabilization delay. Once the stabilization delay is reached, the mixing valve opens and odor flows to the scent port of the manifold. The scent port and air port both flow to the final valve where they terminate using inert fittings. This fast switching solenoid valve consists of two outputs. The first is the exhaust, which is where the odorant would flow until delivered to the animal. The second is animal, whereby the clean air connection would enter the final valve and constantly be delivered to the animal until odorant is delivered. The flow rates between these two outputs would be matched, mitigating pressure changes during odor delivery. Now that we have a better understanding of the hardware and how the system works, we can begin the initial setup, making all the necessary connections to turn this into a functional unit after you've received it. Once your unit is unpacked, you can begin to make all the necessary connections to get it up and running. With your air source in place, connect the 1 8 inch tubing from your regulator to the air in push fitting. Make sure to give it a little tug to ensure it's seated properly. Next, take your ethernet cable included in the accessories kit and connect it to the LAN port on the front panel of your unit and computer. On the back of the controller, plug in the included power cable. Next, you will need to connect the exhaust air out port to the exhaust port on the mixing valve manifold. Cut a piece of 1 8 inch tubing included with the unit to desired length and connect it to the exhaust air out fitting. Once in, take the other end and insert it into the exhaust port on the underside of the mixing valve manifold. You'll now need to connect the final valve to the valve circuit board using the included DB9 connector. Take the DB9 connector and attach it to underneath the mixing valve. Once seated properly, take the other end and connect it to the blue cable coming from the final valve. Now that the final valve is connected to the controller, you'll need to connect the air and scent tubing. Cut the included 1 8 inch Teflon tubing to desired length depending on the distance needed from olfactometer to final valve location. Using the provided three-piece inert fittings, slide the threaded piece over the tubing. Then slide the o-ring on. And finally, insert the nipple inside the tubing. Once assembled, screw the tubing into the air port of the final valve, taking caution not to over tighten as these fittings can break easily. Take the other end and insert it into the air push fitting on top of the mixing valve manifold. Repeat these steps for the scent line. The system is all set up and ready to use. But what if you want to expand the number of vials? The 220A base unit includes four vials, but here I will walk you through how to install an add-on module to expand to eight total. Repeating this process for up to two more modules makes the unit expandable to up to 16 total odorants. On the left is your four odor base unit, which can be expanded to eight using an add-on module here. First thing that needs to be done is removing the mixing valve assembly. To do this, remove the thumb screws holding the mounting plate in place. Then 
Then, using two hands, slide the plate out carefully. Once removed, unplug the cable connected to the circuit board and set aside. Take your add-on module and mount it to the base unit, ensuring the DB9 connection is made between them. Once attached, reattach the thumb screws to hold the unit in place. Now that the modules are connected, we need to attach the 1 16th inch dilution and odor tubing between the two vial manifolds. Take the 1 16th inch inert fitting and assemble as previously shown. Then screw in odor line fitting to the valve manifold and repeat this for the dilution line. Once that is complete, you'll need to reattach the mixing valve manifold to the end of the unit. Connect the blue cable to the connector on the valve circuit board. Then slide the mixing valve plate into place, ensuring the DB9 connection is made. Then reattach the thumb screws to secure it in place. Depending on the odorant used in your olfaction research, as well as the experimental paradigm, special care may need to be taken to replace odorant in the vials. Here, I will demonstrate three common methods for doing so. Method one involves unscrewing the cap from the vial. Once the cap is removed, insert your odorant of choice. When finished, replace the cap and vial. Note that all three methods being shown are for the same odor. If you'd like to use a new odor, this requires a new vial and tubing. Method two requires you to unscrew the threaded connectors from the vial manifold. Once disconnected, remove the vial with the cap and tubing together. This method is intended for odors that cannot be exposed to the animal testing area and thus need to be done in a different room or under a fume hood. In a fume hood, remove the cap, insert your odorant, and replace the cap. Bring the assembled vial back to your olfactometer and reattach the threaded connectors to the vial manifold. Method three is the simplest and allows you to top up your odorant using a syringe. Simply insert a thin gauge hypodermic needle into the cap septum Release the odorant and remove. When removed, the septum will self-seal. Although the system employs Teflon tubing and constant airflow to limit odorants from sticking around in the system, after a period of time, the tubing will need to be replaced, especially when taking into account the volatility of the odorants used. Follow along to learn how to replace vial, manifold, and final valve tubing lines to ensure there is no cross-contamination in the system. Unscrew the threaded connectors for the vial tubing being replaced.
Then, remove the cap and tubing assembly from the vial. Replace the cap and tubing with a prefabricated vial cap assembly. Install the vial and reattach the threaded connectors as previously shown. If your unit does not include pre-made caps and tubing, I will show you how to do this next. Unscrew the threaded connectors and remove the previous cap and tubing as shown. Cut your 1 inch tubing to required length by matching it up with the previous tubing for both the dilution and odor lines and attach the inert fittings. The longer tubing attaches to the dilution line and the shorter to the odor line. Set those aside and find a new clean vial. With the included metal tube, insert it through the cap septum. Then take your tubing and insert it. Slide the tubing all the way through to ensure that it is within the vial. Then slide the tubing all the way through and out. Repeat this same process for the second length of tubing. Once the tubing is through, ensure that the shorter piece of tubing slides further into the vial and the longer tubing remains higher up as to pick up the headspace and not the liquid. Attach the cap and tubing assembly to the new vial and reinstall onto the vial manifold. Next, we need to replace the tubing connecting the vial manifolds for any 8, 12, or 16 channel units. Measure and cut a length of 1 16th inch tubing, and then remove previous threaded connectors and tubing. Keep in mind that you can reuse the connectors if so desired, but depending on the volatility you should consider using new ones. Attach the fittings to the new tubing as shown previously. Then reattach the threaded fittings to the vial manifold for both the dilution and odor lines. Repeat this process for any other tubing including the mixing valve and final valve to prevent cross-contamination. You've learned about how the system works and how to configure it to meet your unique needs, but how do you actually control and deliver odor stimuli? Follow along as I demonstrate our olfactometer control software module where you can configure each odor vial and set flow rates to deliver precise concentrations. You can also track the status of your delivery system with the advanced status window which shows a virtual representation of your system in real time. In addition, you will learn how to generate defined or random sequences of odor challenges and execute them. Launch the 228 olfactometer control program located on the desktop. First thing you'll need to do is configure the vials in your system to indicate what odorant is in each individual vial. Click on config, configure system, to open the system configuration window. If you have previously configured the vials as seen here, 
you can clear them by clicking Clear Vials. However, if this is the first time you've used the program, you'll need to add odorants and solvents that will be used along with the concentration of each odor in liquid. Click on line one, then add new odorant. Here, type in the name of the odorant you wish to add. And then click OK. Then click on add new solvent and enter the name of a unique solvent. Now you can set the odorant for vial one by selecting it from the drop down menu. Then select the solvent and enter the volume concentration in the liquid. Finalize your selection by clicking set selected vial and your odorant should now appear in the table above for vial one. Continue with the process for each of your vials. Set the total system flow rate up to 950 SCCMs, which is equal to the sum of the odor and dilution flows. For more detail on IO1 and IO2 modes for external triggering, refer to the manual. When finished, save config to a file for future use. Then click OK. Now let's take a look at the Advanced Status and Control window. Click on Config, Advanced Status and Control. This window will display a graphical representation of the system status of the olfactometer in real time. Clicking on a mass flow controller will allow the user to set the flow rate manually. MFC1 is the dilution flow, MFC2 is the odor flow, and MFC3 on the right is the exhaust flow. The software will also auto detect the number of vials connected to it and then update the diagram to show all vials in the system. Clicking on the various vials and valves on the diagram will actuate them manually. As vial valves are turned on and off, the diagram of the valve changes from an X for valve off to a flow through line, valve on, and the background color of the valves changes from white to green. Likewise, the final valve symbol changes to show the actual flow pattern through the valve and the background color changes to green to show the valve is energized and the odor flow is being sent to the animal port. This window can be left open during experiments to provide a real-time display of vial status to ensure things are running as expected. However, it can be closed and opened at any time. Next, let's dive into the two methods of odor delivery with this system. The first uses a predefined sequence of odor challenges automatically executed by the software. To configure this, click on Config, Sequencer. The Sequencer window allows the user to create a sequence of challenges to be executed by the olfactometer with predefined timing or based on the sequence trigger signal. The user can manually create a sequence to their specifications or they can have the software generate a random sequence using their chosen parameters. To write a sequence, first select the vial number to be used from the dropdown. Set the delay to challenge, which has a minimum of 20 seconds. And the duration of odor delivery of at least 20 milliseconds. If you'd like to trigger the release of this vial or odorant with external software, check the box next to external trigger, which will allow the user to trigger using a rising edge TTL pulse. If you'd like to stop the flow of the odorant as well using a falling edge, check this box too.
In addition, if you wish to trigger the start of the entire sequence as written, check the box beside Use DIO1 as Sequence Trigger, which will initiate the sequence once a rising edge TTL pulse is sent via an external source, such as a microscope imaging program. Note that this will only become available once an external source is plugged into DIO1 on the front panel. Click Add to add this odorant to the sequence and repeat for the number of vials or odorants you wish to use. The Challenge Sequence box shows the sequence as it will run. Rows can be added or deleted from the list using the Remove or Add buttons below. Total and Elapsed Time boxes here describe the total and elapsed time of the sequence. The total time is generated as the sequence is created. The elapsed time is shown while the sequence is running. Move up and move down buttons allow you to edit the order of challenges and you can also utilize the shuffle button to randomly assign order with your user defined odorants. If you'd like to generate a random sequence of odor challenges, select Generate Random, which will open the Random Sequence Generator. Here, you can indicate the number of challenges, select the vials to be included in the sequence, including no vials as an option, then set the minimum and maximum durations and delays the program can use to generate the sequence, as well as the step size. Once satisfied, select Generate, and the program will generate a random sequence of challenges. To execute a sequence, simply click Run, located at the bottom of the sequencer window. If you do not wish to use a sequence of challenges, but rather manually deliver odorant to the animals, you can use the main screen to accomplish this. Here, you can select the odor from the drop-down menu, set total flow percentage through the vial, which sets the concentration of the odor to be delivered, and set the odor delivery duration, or how long you want the odor to be delivered for. Once this is set, you can begin to manually deliver odors to the animal by first clicking Flow Odor to Exhaust. You'll notice a delay between selecting this and the Deliver Odor to Animal button. This is the odor stabilization delay set prior to selecting your odors. Once this button becomes gray, you can deliver the odor to the animal. You can then repeat as needed for the same or different odor. Once complete and all vials are emptied, it is important to purge the system, which opens all the valves and flows clean air throughout to wash away residual odorant. After this is completed, you can select Stop Flow, which shuts off all valves. With the 228 olfactometer, you can be confident that you'll be delivering precise, repeatable odor stimuli utilizing our three mass flow controller system, which mitigates pressure changes and produces consistent odorant pulses. A modular design ensures the odor delivery system can be easily configured to your specific needs and integrate with existing behavioral or electrophysiological experiments. Thank you for taking the time to watch.